Welcome to the Penny Bloom Podcast. Ain't another place that has got more bomb bass. Rump past your mom, dad's listening to Tomcats. Talking everything that make you sad. We don't want that. We're here to make you smile. Put your mind at ease. Peace, love, and bloom. And always praise Keanu Reeves. This what we about. Get some weed in now. We'll talk until we can't no more. And then we peace and out. All right, let's go. Penny Bloom Podcast. It's the Penny Bloom Podcast. Penny Bloom Podcast. So let's fucking get into it, what do you say? Hello everybody! Welcome in to another episode of the Penny Bloom Podcast. As I said, it's almost Thanksgiving, and uh, we figured we'd celebrate right. Uh, Obviously, to you guys, it is nowhere near Thanksgiving. It is February 18th, 2022. Coming at you from the past, bitch. Four months in the past, which is kind of wild to consider. Uh, but yeah, we're kind of doing this shit out of order. We felt like going ahead and doing a 1977 Star Wars. So we're going to do a 1977 Star Wars. Let's, uh, let's get right to it. I'm Colton Robertson, joined by Joseph George. What is up, homie? What up? What up? It's always a pleasure and it's the most utmost pleasure to be here today. Oh, fuck. Is it going to be a good one? Because obviously week by week here, we have been discussing... Every year from the 1970s, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, this week we hit 77 and we will be going all the way through the last week in December in which that last week we will touch on a movie from 2022. It's a nice, efficient project we've got going on here. 52 films, 52 weeks. Oh, fuck, buddy. It's it's a lot of fun, and there's probably no stop along this journey that I'm more excited for than this one. 1977 Star Wars, written and directed by George Lucas. What a year. What this, a year. This was a year to remember. You this know, was. This, uh, changed the game. The game was say. permanently changed. Uh, and we're gonna, minds were blown, and we're gonna talk about it deeply. And uh, as you know, me and Joe are just massive Star Wars fans, so we've talked about this movie and this franchise for so many, so many hours, just countless hours. Uh, and we figured for this one time only, along the fifty-two week ride throughout this year, uh, we'd go ahead and do a live commentary of a film. Because this is far and away the film both of us are most comfortable with, and the one I'd say that both of us are the most excited to just talk about all the way through. So, if you will, you can join us on Disney+. Plus. We would be honored if you would join us to uh, quote one great Darth Vader uh, head- We would be honored if you would join us. Yeah, go ahead and... Uh, Head to Disney Plus. Cue up Star Wars, Episode 4, A New Hope. Sorry, I had to take a sip of the old coffee. It, after all, it is almost midnight, and we're about to do a two-hour pod. Uh, so strap the fuck in, everybody. It's Thanksgiving. Uh, potentially, potentially a uh, tradition in the making. I'm not going to cap. Uh, be a pretty good one. I'm down. Let's do it. Sig- this is a great tradition. This is, and it's it's the start of it. You're living the beginning of a tradition. <laughs> Obviously, we're doing this every year. Uh, but yeah, get it up on Disney Plus. Go ahead and press play, and then scroll that that shit back to the zero colon zero zero mark. And when I give us a countdown, I'm gonna go full Han and Chewie. I'm gonna count down three, two, one, punch it. Mm. And on punch it, you know what to do. On punch, punch it, it. We're, we're pressing play. Again, that is three, two, one, punch it. That was just a drill. That wasn't the real Not one. Not the real one. Not the real one. Get ready. Get set. Three, two, one, punch it. And we're off. 20th Century Fox. It's time for Star Wars, bitch. 
There is not a single stop along this ride that I am more excited for. This classic Lucasfilm logo coming over the screen. and God, does that Isn't take 20th, you back? 20th Century Fox. They're now 21st Century Fox, right? Do they change their name or are they I think still? There's, I think they might still be 20th Century Fox. Well, they got no bought by way. Disney, so it doesn't matter anymore. Mm. <laughs> uh, but, you know, here here we get the first iconic crawl. Uh, at one point, it did not say Episode Four. That's true. Or A New Hope. At one point, it was just Star Wars. Wow, that's uh, that's weird to think for, about. For a while, that it would what get movies name. like open like this before? You know, like in space. Just you. This would be crazy in seventy seven to like just be in a theater and be like, you're instantly what's... transported to a place you haven't been before, and Galactic Empire. The the Death Star, uh, like you oh, see, and, you and know, they're these, laying like, down all these beautiful buzzwords: empire, mm. rebel spies, Death Star. Like you got Princess Leia's name popping up there. It's just mm. perfect. All of it, uh, like it, all lends itself to becoming like, oh, we're going to a place I haven't been before, and I can't wait to see where that is. Now, I will say, if I was watching this movie for the first time in 1977. There's a relative chance I'm not real in for the first 15 minutes as we follow nothing but C-3PO and R2-D2. It's something that you probably have to love to appreciate. Uh, but there's no one That's better. True. There's no one better to introduce us to this universe, I don't think. There are pals all the way through, man. Like, they, they seen everything. They're the real Snoke. You know the who saw the rise and the fall of the empire. It's R two and C three. It's R two and C three PO. They've seen everything, dude. They're the best. And uh, obviously, this iconic opening shot of uh, Princess Leia's old old cruiser flying away from a Imperial star destroyer, and uh, those things. I never get over the scale of the shit in this movie. Stuff compared to the Star Destroyer is tiny, and whenever those Star Destroyers go up to the Death Star, and you're just like, oh my fucking god. Yeah. Another thing that's crazy about this is that everything you see, other than lasers, is captured in camera. Like, the it's, miniatures. It's like, these are practical. miniatures. And film on top of film, on top of layer, on top of layer. The beautiful mural paintings, you know, of like, oh. you know, those go for like millions of dollars. Like, oh. you can buy those, like, like, well, probably not for sale. You know, many. Of I them mean, Ralph McQuarrie, but... what a special fucking artist that guy was. Oh. Like, uh, oh. just an absolute legend. Uh, but the, <laughs> I, I love, I love seeing C three PO and R two D two here. Uh, and obviously, if you're a Star Wars fan, you know we're coming off of a. Uh, Coming off of Rogue One here, fresh off the end of Rogue One, where Vader's just gone on a killing spree of Rebels. Uh, lovely. Got the Han Solo blaster. I got the Darth Vader mug. We're really living it up this evening. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I got my... I love this Han Solo blaster. I love it so much, I printed two of them. <laughs> Fuck yeah, you did. Got mine up in my room. Mm-hmm. Oh man, like every, everything in this movie, like I'm thinking in, like in the mindset of experiencing it for the first time. Oh like, yeah, that's the way, that's the way you got a live commentary things, you know? Yeah, seeing like a stormtrooper, like that's like, what? Look at that. That's crazy to see for the first time. We take stormtroopers for granted, you know? No, like, yeah, absolutely. Those are <laughs> an incredibly original design. And they're they are innately lending themselves to that soldier endlessly Imagine on the line. That. <laughs> and then you see, see Vader. That. The contrasting all black menacing just you're afraid. You're afraid. Let's be frank. Whoever made the decision to mess up his breathing or like breathe like that. Mm. Like cause you got you gotta think like they had to come up with the breathing, you know. And they had to come up like, with every idea. They had to idea. come up with that. Like that's just 
instantly menacing. Like, oh. God, and these are some of the most iconic shots in the film. Mm-hmm. With uh, R2-D2 getting the, the plans to the Death Star from Princess Leia. Goaded. R2. God, the symmetry here. Just look like the mm. the the doorways being like perfect. Like I just I just love every inch of this movie, dude. It's mm. so satisfying. Everywhere you look, like there's like they don't they didn't cut corners. Like this was George splurged on this movie. Well, and that's what's crazy too is that like they were forced like they didn't have the budget they get for Empire. They didn't have the budget they get for Return of the Jedi. So like and this is also the special editions, so there's been some retroactive work done on them. Uh but not a ton. There's not a lot changed here. Uh obviously it's a four K cleanup and that's pretty <laughs> sexy. Uh like god damn that shine on the stormtroopers' heads and stuff. Mm-hmm. That's clean. Wanna... That's like just a cool thing. Oh no, go ahead, go ahead. We get oh, but this is no, I just feel uh, wrong talking over Leia's theme. Oh, um, dude, how could how could you? But uh, I forgot what I was saying. Wow, Leia just took it right out. Leia of always me. takes uh, it right out of you, man. She's uh, what was I talking? She what commands the heck was I talking at any time she's on the screen. She commands your mind. It's just it's just the way of her. It's the way things go. The heck was I talking about? Doesn't matter now. We're off, and uh. <laughs> The dynamic immediately between 3PO and R2-D2, you're like, okay, yeah, I like R2-D2. Yeah. R2's that dude. 3PO's the one that you gotta, you gotta learn to love 3PO, man. That's one that you gotta, you gotta tough it out with. And one day you'll appreciate 3PO and all his glory. Like in the, uh, in the sequels, like when he's like, let me take one good look at my friends, Mm. like... Dude, I cried. Oh, yeah. Like, I was like, damn, no, that's my boy, 3PO. Then we're the through like, it all from 77. Like I, straight off yeah, like, I hate 3PO, but I love, it's a love-hate 3, you know? You love you love him because you hate him. There you go. There or you, you go. hate him because you love him. I love Leia's voice here, where it's like so posh royalty princess. Mm. She's like, go fuck yourself, Darth Vader. <laughs> Just, she's an absolute legend, dude. Imagine just not knowing that's your father, right there. <laughs> like, that's a that is what your a dad. twist. That is your dad. Experiencing that twist, like, would be insane. To like, that'd be so to, special. Oh, I mean, it's not this movie, but you know. We won't be doing we won't be doing a live commentary of it in three weeks, you know, or maybe we will. I don't I don't know. For the love of God, you never know what might happen. I remember what I was going to say. Do it. The cool thing about film, like that they have, like the film is that it's like infinitely scalable. Like true. Um, like this movie will always look good, no matter how good technology gets, just because like the film they used is infinitely scalable. And that's just like, that's just like to think like they had to make that decision to use like that film. Like it's a special, special kind of film. Yeah. Like they knew this movie was going to be a timeless iconic movie. Like they knew like, how could you not? Was, I mean, and uh, several people didn't, this was one that, it was a risk the studio was taken with George Lucas and that George Lucas was taken with his own money. Uh, this is, this is huge. Uh, and a guy that has uh, only ever seen the Mandalorian would tell you that this looks a lot like uh, the Mandalorian season two, episode one. Uh, reminds me of Dune a little bit. I don't know. I feel like there's an influence there. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting yeah. that you say that. Interesting. Uh, perhaps, perhaps in some way they are connected. Uh, <laughs> maybe, th- maybe that's an intelligent thought to have that I had for the first time ever that nobody's ever thought. That is pretty good. This is looking a little like Dune now that you say it. I, Going out on site, say stuff. It, dude. There's like sand, like, like a sa- sand everywhere. A lot of it. 
big sand monster maybe How later much on. Sand? Where's the worm? Sand Where monster that eats vertically like Dune sand monsters do. <laughs> have, have you seen the original Dune? Like, have you watched uh, I, that yet? I have not. Uh, I can't have remember. Any we ended up all? we ended up replacing it on the list for 1983, right? Uh, yes, for Scarface. Oh, that makes sense. That makes sense. Um, yeah. Oh, wait, no, it might have been 84. 84 is The Shining. No, that's, that's a, 80. uh, The Terminator. That's, that's what, what it was. Too. That's what it was. Uh, but yeah, look at that in the background. We got the mm. skeleton of what I think was some sort of tiny, tiny crate dragon, or potentially a crate dragon that is so much further in the distance than we can actually tell there. Uh, because crate dragons be big as fuck. That's, uh, that's a big boy. That's yeah, look, big he's spanning quite the distance. That's going quite um, the far ways away from 3PO. Oh, these shots. They're some of my favorites in the entire franchise, dude, with the Jawas stalking R2-D2 here. One of the best noises, like the Boutini, like uh, that, like I uh, don't know why, but every it's just like a. I I had this um. One of my friend's dad, his text tone was Boutini, so every funny. time he got a text, like boom, that you heard that, and like it's so ingrained in my brain that like every time I hear it, like in the movie, it's just like ah, oh, like. It's just such a callback. In, like I used to hear that all the time. Memory. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, that's what this whole fucking movie is—is is an instant childhood memory. I think here it comes. I think it's like right here. I think. Yeah. Utini. They say it a lot. <laughs> The face plant. No, oh, there it was. Ah, oh, it's so good. Fucking fantastic. Uh, I love watching the Jawas run around. Mm. Look at him. Look at him. <laughs> you know there's a Mandela effect that uh, people believed that their eyes were red? They've never, like... People like remember seeing their eyes being red, um, and not like the amber. And huh, I could only... have been, could be due to like the resolution changes over time yeah. that it just got better and better. Um, but like I kind of remember a, a like re I do kind of remember red eyes. Like I, mean, I don't know like where I saw it though. Uh, like maybe like a Halloween. They've like, done art like modern. Just, Modern Jawas, off-world Jawas have red eyes. Really? Yeah. Uh, like in The Mandalorian, when you see them on uh, Navarro, they have red eyes. They have red? Oh, that's right. In The Mandalorian. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So there's prob that's probably what sparked that conversation in the first place, is like, wait, I always thought they were red. Why is this different mm -hmm. sort of thing? I don't know. That's interesting. I always remembered them as orange, and then the red was a distinct difference to me. Mm. Uh, Another famous Mandela effect is, no, I am your father, and instead of Luke, I am your father. Like That one's, do you, that one's less not really based a in Mandela, Mandela effect yeah. and more like I don't know, yeah, just, just a just... basic misunderstanding of the scene. It's like, Luke. Collectively, people just went, Luke, I am your father. Yeah, to sum up the scene, yeah, you say Luke, you know, like, yeah. You don't just go, no, I am your father. You know, that just sounds weird out of context. Yeah, exactly. You got to go with the name. First appearance of a gonk droid there. Mm. Uh, obviously, that, that has rippled throughout Star Wars all the way to the most recent, uh, uh, well, not most recent show, but second most recent show in The Bad Batch uh, with Gonky. Making uh, making the his heroic run. A defective gonker droid, man. It's so cute. They're also that show's so cute, man. Dude, the Bad Batch oh. is just fucking gold. What an incredible fucking movie. Gosh, and those the, the Mandalorian, that's one of those shows that like 
the way the Marvel shows made us appreciate the side characters a little more, the Mandalorian makes you appreciate every little side detail of Star Wars a little more. Like, mm. the appreciation I have for the Jawas and the Sand Crawlers mm. after Season 1, Episode 2 of The Mandalorian, uh, where they're after Soka, the egg. Mm. What a fucking... What Soka, a, Soka! What a fucking great episode. Mm. Beautiful. Yeah, they're... Yeah, the shows really just elevate. Like, I'm so glad that we're just getting show after show. You ever, like, uh, you're, you've never seen Spaceballs, right? Mm-mm. There's no, a scene that's not. like a an homage to that scene where the stormtroopers will, were looking through. the They're combing the sand, where they're literally taking combs and running them through sand. And someone goes, what have you found? And someone turns around and goes, man, we ain't found shit. <laughs> huh. I really got it. I, I think. I feel like I've seen like clips of Spaceballs. You almost certainly have. It's a pretty. It's one of the most classic parody movies of all time. Is it like the Darth Vader helmet? Like just oh. absurd, <laughs> absurdly big. Okay, so yeah, I've. I, I've never watched this movie all the way through, though. Like I, I don't know the plot of this movie at all. There's. Um, Hardly I just a plot. Have seen, yeah, okay, but I've seen like maybe five minutes of this movie. Oh no, it's 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 so. it's hilarious, and if you like Star Wars, you'll think it's funny. That's just kind of the bottom line. Uh, it's 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 funny as fuck. But uh, I'm actually reading the Kenobi novel novel actively, and there's a whole section about uh this this community of uh of people who live with like one shop and that one shop is the only place they can shop. So when the Jawas come to town, she like threatens them and is like, Hey, you buy from the Jawas right now. You're never allowed to shop here again. Don't buy from the Jawas. I will go buy from the Jawas and you'll come to me later. Okay. Okay. Uh, and it's, it's just, and ultimately how that, how that ends up is, Obi-Wan Kenobi shows up to the the shop, havoc ensues, and then they're like, oh, and she like, to create a distraction, is like, all right, everyone go shop at the Jawas, and apparently people just flood to get, <laughs> to get what the Jawas have. That's kind of, uh, that's kind of their thing, is that they, they've got everything that, uh, everybody wants because they stole it from everybody. That every, mm. everybody had it, and then they took it. Hmm. Man, Gra- novel like just not just novel in comics are just so much cooler. Like, ah, you just get a chance to go a lot deeper, mm-hmm. uh, especially in novels. I mean, uh, and obviously you can establish that depth. The power converters in a well done movie. <laughs> yeah, I was going to go down the Tashi station to pick up some power converters. That's the I love Mark Hamill. Like in it like you know, he like a year ago actually like was at a Toshi station and like he took a picture like outside of the you know legend. Like, oh he's just ah oh, Mark Hamill's just such a cool guy. And how about the fact that we don't see our protagonist Luke Skywalker until seventeen minutes into this movie? It's like uh two thousand one a space odyssey. It really takes a minute to get that movie started. Yeah, you know, like There we see that that R two unit that we eventually see uh, in the Mandalorian as well in possession of Peli. Really? Yeah the the one that has the bad motivator. Wow, that's so awesome! It's the one that pulls up the map for him in the season two oh. premiere. Wow, this universe is so connected. I appreciate like. People have complaints about the, like, smallness of it at times, like how our characters happen to cross over, and it's like, I can get that in some aspects, but in other aspects, I'm like, if they have the opportunity to, why wouldn't you want more fun? Because that's really all it provides you with, is more fun. Yeah, like what? Like, uh, have you heard the uh, voice actor of um, Kanan? Freddie Um, Prinze. Have you heard him talk like, like 
how George like writes like it he, like he he sticks to like the will of the force like yeah. very strictly you know like it and like that's how like he writes and uh like you just have to accept that you know like you just have to accept that it's this family you know that's super connected with the force mm. and like it's like the force just wills things to happen like in, in these beautiful ways and like it's a story you know it's for entertainment like it's a movie exactly it's to, for fun you know like that's what you want no like, and the right? fact that people feel like they're entitled to shit George Lucas never made Star Wars for the fans. That was like, it was like, I mean, of course, in part it's for, it's for the audience, like as any movie might be, but like, it was really just because he wanted to create it. Like you're not owed shit. George Lucas on many occasions talked about how he didn't like our, he didn't like the fandom. The fandom was obsessive and unfair to the creators. Like, if George, like, didn't just make this, like, wasn't just passionate about this, like, Hollywood, like, just would be, I don't know. That's a crazy what if, like, what if George Lucas didn't create Star Wars? Or, like, what if he just didn't release? Nah, because the know? shit he started through Lucasfilm, like, the 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 branching off effect everything his company does from there the way it spawns ILM and different branches of Lucasfilm uh they eventually go on to uh, uh be a huge part of the creation of Pixar uh the THX all that that's Lucasfilm sound like it's th their reach is so deep it's insane. But uh oh, I love George. Dude. Of course he sold that bitch for twelve million and dipped. Or was more he than that. So it was so like... sad. He looked so sad when he was signing that contract though. Yeah. Like I don't know, his face just looked like like did I just fuck up? Like kinda. Like, well, I did, think like, it's it, I, I think it's just kind of uh it's interesting because just that you know, he, he kind of had this anti-establishment nature about him. This, uh, no, you're not going to sell out sort of thing. And it was inherent in the, in the Star Wars storytelling. Like you don't give in to the empire. You're, you're the rebellion. You're the independent creator. Mm -hmm. You go out on your own, you take the risks, you do it. Uh, and you know, ultimately whenever you're done, you've done what you've wanted I think it's okay to go ahead and go, okay, these stories can keep going, but I don't want to be the one who's telling them anymore. Like, I think that's fair. I think any, if there's any sort of, uh, resentment people harbor, harbor for him to this day, mm. I think that's a little unfair. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, the deal was originally 4 billion, but it said that Disney has paid well over 10 billion for it um for star wars so like paid paid him 10 billion yeah star wars made this man a a multi-billionaire a, a what what is that 10 figures 11 figures that's insane Oh my god. Dude created a universe in his head and became a multi-billionaire because of it. Years later. George Lucas needs to pay his taxes. <laughs> <laughs> I won't have it any other way. Oh man, now I'm looking at the picture of him signing it. Oh, his face. It just looks so... Oh, George. Oh, Georgie. Oh, George. How about, how about a couple of the most underrated characters in the entire mm. Star Wars universe here? Or more specifically, one of the most underrated characters of all time with Aunt Beru. Uh, an absolute legend. Uh, raising our boy, Luke Skywalker, to be the kind young man he is. Uh, I think we have a lot more to owe to her than we do uh, Owen Lars. Even though I think that, you know, Owen shields him. 
from the world at, that he needs to be shielded from for a while. Uh, holds on a little too tight. Ultimately, mm-hmm. you know, kills kills him. Hide out for so long, they'll come and find you. That Tatooine son, too, man. A lot of characters are aging just fine from the Clone Wars to then. Other people are not. (laughs) That'd be insane to bear the child of, like, knowingly Darth Vader's child. Like, having that knowledge. Well, I don't know that they know it's Darth Vader. I think they just know it was Anakin Skywalker. But th- I, th- it seems they have an idea that this guy turned out to be someone bad. Like, like they were, st- like Obi Wan was straight up with them about that part of it. Actually, they might not know. Like, I think might... it's like I think I think Obi Wan would be like, it's better for you not to know what's happened here. Yeah, because she was saying, like, he has too much of his father in him and, like, too much of a good note to be, like, to ever say that about if they knew, like, it was actually Vader. It was Vader, yeah. Well, you know, Owen does respond. That's what I'm afraid of. That's true. Well, yeah. Hard to say. It's hard to say. Is he Uh, saying that's what I'm afraid of? Sorry, the way that 3PO's armor, or not armor, glistens, glistens, it just... Mm. The, the the body theme. just shines. It's beautiful. I'm watching it on the projector down here. Frankly, this is mm-hmm. the best beginning of a Thanksgiving I've ever had. Uh, it's true. Yeah, I can't. Don't even know what I've done every other start of Thanksgiving now. Exactly. You know? But now, now I know. Now I know what I'm doing. I watch Star Wars. I watch Star Wars. You can go there. You can go there, yeah. Live, There's live, actually a part of Ewan McGregor's, uh, one of Ewan McGregor's documentaries where they ride their motorcycles across the country. And whenever they got to Tunisia, they went there, went down there. He was like, holy shit. It is that'd wild. Be, that'd be wild. Like, I guess he never... I think he had scenes. He had scenes there, in in the Phantom Menace, uh, or no, 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 because they didn't move there until Attack of the Clones, and he was never on Tatooine in Attack of the Clones. Yeah, I don't think he ever filmed there. But that'd be trippy, though, to be like when he that drops big... off when he drops off the baby. He drops him off at the homestead. I think that would have to be it. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, like I think I remember that. Well, they drop him off right outside the homestead because Yeah. It's right by the it's right by where Luke just looked out into the twin suns earlier. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so he filmed there. You filmed there at least once. Ah, uh, the fucking Tusken Raiders, man. They're uh they're an interesting part of Star Wars lore that frankly I just I just want to learn more about. They're an interesting people. They are. Uh and, and uh Mandalorian just... Mandalorian humanizes them like crazy. Mm-hmm. Which these shows are just so cool. Like, ah, uh, we live in such a good time. Oh, dude, it's fantastic. Dude, I always, I just want that speeder. I want that land speeder for myself. Mm-hmm. The fucking crate dragon call that inspired season two, episode one of uh, dude the Mandalorian. Just screamed. Dude, literally just went like what? There's there's a really Dude, really fascinating. <laughs> this is another bit of the Kenobi novel that is really really cool. There's like a uh, a neighborhood watch 
sort of thing uh, in Tatooine that alerts the neighbors in nearby villages if there's a Tusken Raider invasion in their in their little their little village. And the way they alert them is a crate dragon call. And Kenobi ultimately learns how to make the crate dragon call. And that's how you see it damn. play out here. Well, damn. I wonder if that'll be a piece of the show coming up. Hmm. Yeah, this they're putting it, they're proud. They're putting it on there. Like on Disney Plus, it is like the first thing, like, and it's just that trailer, and they're like like it's like but it's on there. Like yeah. as like a thing like you can click on already. They like they're proud of it. It's going like they know it's good. Yeah. Like like mm. And here we're seeing uh the introduction of Ben Kenobi, who uh played by Sir Alec Guinness, who I think is the best performance of this movie just because all of the universe's lore relies on him. You know? He's got to be the one you believe whenever he's explaining what the fuck's going on. That's true. I don't give I don't think about that a lot cuz I take all the history and the knowledge of Star Wars just for granted like that I know. They had to tell, like, they had to lay it out for the people. Yeah, experiencing this for the first time? Yeah, like, oh, you're Obi-Wan. Oh, you're a Jedi? What does that even mean? You don't even know what that means yet, yeah, you know? Yeah, we were Jedi Knights. We fought in the we fought in the Clone Wars for the Republic. What the yeah, buzzwords. What what are you saying, old man? Like, yeah, in 77 you're like Okay, this dude's a, a space, space veteran. <laughs> yeah. Mark Hamill as Luke Skywalker, just the epitome of character development, dude. Mm. Mm. Like an unmatched glow up in cinema <laughs> history across those three films. C three PO is such a dramatic bitch. Mm. Does he actually have a silver leg or no? I'm pretty sure the answer is yes. I'm not sure. Yes. Yeah. Silver. Silver yeah. there. Yeah, this part is so crucial to you believing what the universe is about the first time you're watching this. I was once a Jedi Knight. What the fuck are you even talking about, old man? God, and I just love thinking about how he's thinking up, thinking back on Hayden Christensen's Anakin and his days as Ewan McGregor's Obi-Wan. You just know the memories are flashing there. Oh. Oh. Heartbreaking. Now, this always leads to one of my favorite old questions. Why do you think Obi-Wan acts like he doesn't know R2-D2? I always forget about this. Always. Like, dude went on, dude was in a war with him. They're like old war buddies, man. Like, they are best friends, like, even. Like, like Obi-Wan, R2-D2 <laughs> was there for the birth of the children. It's just... Yeah, it's just not the continuity. They didn't plan for it, and that's all. <laughs> that's all it is. Uh, but I absolutely love that. And, you know, we get the mention of Vader saying that he was the one who killed Anakin Skywalker. And, uh, you know... That's the story he told his parents. That's the story he told his parents. Uh, I got it. is I the story remember. they tell everybody, I guess. He, that's what they say. Oh, that... yeah, like, even in the comic books, like the Vader comic books, it's like, even Vader interacts with people, and they're like, like people from Naboo, who are like, and along with Padme Amidala, we mourn Anakin Skywalker, who fell along like who fell alongside his fellow Jedi Knights that day, like, mm. and and he like freaks out in a fit of rage because you know he's Anakin Skywalker and stuff. Uh, and it's mm. just like God damn. 
Oh yeah, and Obi Wan acting like he don't know how to work R two D two. I seem to have found it. I did nothing, but uh, R two just did it all by himself. <laughs> is that a sink? <laughs> Are those faucets? Is that a, is that a what sink is that? from a galaxy? Where's the drain? <laughs> how how the water go down? Does it just go on the floor? Just moisture evaporate that bitch up. <laughs> I guess it is in space. They got some crazy. I mean, I'm looking at a hologram right now, so. Yeah, exactly. Help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi. You're my only hope. What a classic fucking line. Mm. And I love that you see her squat down and give the give the message to R2-D2 at the end, because that's what we're seeing the tail end of at the beginning of the movie. Mm. I just love that little detail. God, and I would love a Star Wars what if where they just went ahead and went to Dantooine and blew that thing up because I'd prefer that Alderaan had stayed standing. I'm not going to lie. What if Obi-Wan and Luke get to Alderaan and link up with Bail Organa and what happens then? Yeah, Obi-Wan could have really saved Alderaan. Like, like, if they just got moving now... Instead of going, yeah, like, well. Like, it, they really were like, okay, w- this is like a last, this is a last ditch effort. You know? I guess they don't even know about the Death Star right now, though. Oh, uh, well, I think, uh, I think Kenobi will teach us otherwise. Yeah. But, like, so now they're just like, learning of this you know from from leia they're like all right we we, we need you true yeah i guess i guess i guess, I guess rogue right one away. i guess rogue one is where they learn about the death star so it's like fresh yeah it's like it just happened yeah okay that makes sense that makes sense for sure so it's like there's no way they could have gotten in time to save alderaan like oh, absolutely. Or, like it's just it's just no, yeah, it just ultimately, like, what I wish would have happened is that Tarkin listens to Leia whenever she goes, the rebel base is on Dantooine. Mm. And they just would have gone ahead and gone to Dantooine. Oh, that's what, ah. Uh. <laughs> like, what if Tarkin was just like, eh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go in, or... Prepare the hyperdrive, you know, like, that's just what he's, you know, he's like, all right, let's go. Let's, let's go ahead and uh, get the bit, let's get the fuck out of here. This station is now the ultimate power in the universe. God. And I love that he's like a dork about the force. Ugh. The ability to destroy a planet. Choke, bitch. <laughs> like, at this point, do they, like, do they not know he could do this? Right. You know what's an awesome detail? What's that? Is every time he's choking someone, it's like he's grabbing their esophagus. Like, that's what he's, like, doing. And uh, every time he's, like, he grips it, and, like, you, you see him, like, still, like, hold it open, though. Like, he's gripping it. But in Rogue One, like, when he's going off and he, like, just going through the hallway, he doesn't hesitate to close his fist. Like, doesn't even hesitate a second. Just grab, close. So you know, like, their uh-huh. windpipe is literally just crushed. <laughs> like, oh! Like, oh! Like, what a detail. Like, what a detail to confirm that, that like... That he's gripping the, like, your literal when you know, like, that's what he's doing. Like, oh, like. The fucking robots. They trace the fucking robots here. And I think that's one of the only times they actually refer to the droids as robots. Which is uh, interesting. That's interesting. It's, it, I think it is because it's just early in the movie. Mm-hmm. And they're like, 
you'll get robots early on later and they say droid already every once in a while so you know sprinkle in a robot get them get them real familiar oof big oof this is a quite the tragic origin story Pretty unceremonious death there for the parents yeah. uh, that raised not... Luke. And what sucks is like it's an absolute must for the launching of the story of Luke Skywalker. Like it doesn't happen without them dying there. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's this Man. part. It's like one of these parts where they're pulling up to the Death Star that you're just like, "Wow, that's a big that's fucking the scale." Ship. Mm-hmm. It oh, god, this yeah, every detail, everything is just so cool. To think in a couple movies she's gonna learn that the man who's torturing her is her dad. <laughs> mm-hmm. Whoa. Yeah, that'll uh, that'll send you into a uh, some sort of crisis for sure. Uh, it almost have to. Damn, everything on fire! Straight up burning them. I guess when you're on the de- in the desert, like that's it's just what you do. You just burn the bodies. But I. I... <laughs> Why? Like why? Actually, I, I wish Obi Wan would like <laughs> <laughs> threw the shit on there. <laughs> just adds insult to injury. Just like, all right, well, fuck this thing. Uh, Man, wish Obi Wan would go like Ray Skywalker at the end of uh, of Rise of Skywalker and bury them under the sand like that. Mm. A little bit more ceremonious. I love that transition there. The swipe across the screen. Mm. Uh, just these in-between shots. They're showing us just this, the massive desert planet of Tatooine. Mm. Ah, Moss Eisley Cantina. The most wretched hive of scum and villainy. And you know what's awesome about the most wretched hive of scum and villainy? They're just absolutely bopping smooth jazz. Wait. Smoked jazz? Is that what you said? Space. I said smooth jazz. Smooth jazz. It's like space jazz. And they're just in there. Now I got you. I I was like smoke jazz. What's smoke jazz? Did I say smoke jazz? I don't know. I have. I I'm I not was... gonna lie to you, buddy. I'm feeling <laughs> maybe it. there's a distinct possibility. I said smoke jazz. Uh, possibly. I don't know. We could all. We'll know later. We'll on. find out. <laughs> but uh, guess we'll find out. Yeah, I I at least heard smoke jazz. <laughs> <laughs> I do love I, I do love this first example of the Jedi mind trick, mm. uh, and this was an early. This was one of the signs that made me go, "Oh, is Ray a, is Ray a Kenobi?" They were really hinting at it. Felt like, like it. these are your. I wrote an step. essay on that. I remember in high school. I remember that Ray was a Kenobi. An essay. These are your first steps. Can't abide those Jawas. Disgusting creatures. <laughs> the native Tatooinians just be getting... Just be getting shit on, bro. Not their fault their planet got colonized and now they have to steal from everybody. Yeah, it's not uh, not easy out there in, in this galaxy. Bro, they be living out in the dune sea of Tatooine, bro. You don't think they ain't about it, bro? They're gonna, sh- they're sure as hell gonna steal your shit. They're like, uh, not I'd a place your, to go and I'd be happy. Your shit, I live like, in the Dune Sea. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going out to a desert to be happy. No, fuck know? no. 
Man, the Moss Eisley Cantina. This is the shit. And the fact that, like, every single person that you see has a deep backstory, too. Like, oh, that everybody just... had a name. Yeah. All their species, like, has a name. Even some have languages that are fully written. And see, you that's know. the thing. That's the thing that Star Wars has lost a little bit of in the Disney era. Uh, like, we don't even know Ray's mom's name. She's still just Ray's mother. Wow. It's like, give the characters names, man. That's just fun. That's an important lineage, too. Yeah, like, exactly. Uh... Like, give us give us a name. Mm. And she's a fantastic actress, Jodie Comer, the chick who plays who, who plays Ray's mother. Uh she could she could do so much in so many stories. Uh Yeah, I don't know. They just don't have George, you know. True. They True. don't have the encyclopedia of Star Wars. Like, right. They have Filoni, which is the closest thing. To yeah, it. and we do get a little bit more of that like on planets like Navarro and uh Catal- Cat- Catalan or whatever. Uh, Ahsoka was hiding out on. Mm-hmm. Uh, you get a little bit more of that there. Uh, up on Baba. Hmm. You got butt chin, balls <laughs> chin, however you want to look at it. Why is this dude just angry? He's like, Luke, uh, he doesn't like you. And another thing, I, I don't really fucking like you either. Uh, He's just a so... crazy guy. That's just who he is. He's just... uh. A hateful kind of guy. That's a fact. And I think it's interesting that this is one of the, uh, one of, if not the only time we see blood drawn by the mm. lightsaber. Mm. Uh, it's not just like a clean cut. Not just a clean like cut. Like solderized or whatever that word is. Yeah, uh, solderized. <laughs> back to normal. Love the little, uh, species, Cad Bane species. Uh, yeah, I wanted to point that out too. Pop up. Just so, uh, I can't wait for live action Cad Bane and Book of Boba. Book of Boba. They know, have you know to have him in there. You like, know he's coming oh, through. Oh, come on, man. No, and like the opportunity to have like fucking all of them there. And like after watching The Godfather, those scenes in the trailer where Boba's at the head of the table and every captain and everybody's lined up on the sides. It was just such an obvious parallel and imagery that that's what they're going for. Jabba ruled with fear. I intend to rule with respect. Like, mm. that show's going to be so good. Oh, it's going to be so good. It's a fast ship. And I love that you know even that even the story about the ship being fast as fuck gets fledged out in a, an entire movie later on. It's a throwaway line in this. Mhm. It it always goes up a second from twelve to thirteen to fourteen to fifteen. Like as the movies go on, I think like in the uh, in the sequels, someone says like fifteen. He's like. 12. Twelve, like, like it always, 15. it always goes up and up. Yeah, like, yeah, it always goes up and up and up. <laughs> it's always referred to as, oh, that look at that piece of junk. Wait, that's what we're flying, like, <laughs> and it's actually a badass. And I love that in the Rise of Skywalker. Whenever like, what's gonna, like, Poe's rushing to save Finn and Janna, and he's like, I'm not gonna get there in time. I'm not fast enough. And Lando's like, but I am. And I love in that entire Yee-hoo! movie, Lando is just like laughing at the wheel of the falcon that's just like all he's doing the whole time which is just fantastic gotta remember that was his ship you know there's a line where han so like lando goes when are you gonna give me my ship back and han goes over my dead body (laughs) well well well, it's only fitting that that he took it back yeah yeah that was his boy you know and i mean like that's that's a man whose friends all died, and he did not get to say goodbye to a single one of them. Damn, that's a that's rough true. thought. I almost cried at that thought the other night. I'm not going to lie to you. Damn, like someone took a screenshot on Twitter of him at the end of Rise of Skywalker, 
just like watching everyone celebrate. Oh, and I was like, God, fucking damn it. Uh, but let's focus on Greedo and Han Solo's encounter here because this became one of the most iconic scenes uh, in all of Star Wars lore and for one of the most ridiculous reasons I've ever... It's the it's the most asinine fan craze I've ever heard of in my life. If Han well, the, shot first. Yeah, and I think, I think Harrison Ford just... Uh, every time he's asked, you know, like... Who shot first? He's always um, like, "Who cares?" Or like, "I don't know." I don't fucking like, know. I, I don't know. know who cares. Like, I killed him or whatever. You he's know, like, like he, well, the blaster didn't actually go off when I shot it. <laughs> so you I know, don't we know. don't have functional space blasters. You know, you know, it was hey, 1977. <laughs> you hey, know, we kid. still don't have those today. <laughs> God. I love that uh, the way he walks out of this place is so fucking weird to me. I don't know. He just looks stiff. <laughs> I never noticed that. He just, yeah, he looked like he pooped his pants or something. Yeah, he's, he's just like... What? And that's what's so awesome is now that I've watched this so many times, I can point out all of these little things I notice every once in a while. Mm. Uh, Tarkin is one of the most underrated villains in all of Star Wars. He just is like, while Vader is a menacing, brooding force that is obviously evil, Tarkin is the human version of that. Mm-hmm. Like, you look at him and you know, oh, that's an evil fucking man. And he is just human. Him and Thrawn, like, Thrawn. they're like, I don't know who's worse. Well, it's like, <laughs> it's hard Thrawn's to say. They're both pretty fucking terrible. Thrawn's more respectful, though. Yeah, yeah, like he'll he'll at least appreciate your art as you die. Tarkin, yeah, Tarkin's just disrespect. He doesn't give a fuck. Alderaan, okay. Fuck Alderaan, we'll blow that bitch up right now. This is just a display of our power. And it's I also Alderaan. love that, like, Krennic dies in Rogue One, and mm-hmm. then Tarkin's just like, "Fucking dope! I'll take this bitch over. Let's go, but let's go, bitches!" Like, uh. Let's go blow up Alderaan. <laughs> uh, yeah, billions of people just died. Display of our power. It's a good. It's a good. This is a good just presentation. Well, to show what's the funny is like it's retaliation after they had to destroy an entire base of theirs. That's true. Wow. It's a clapback. It's not even. It's not even the first strike. It's a, okay, y'all did that. Here you go. You, damn. Wow. That's what this all started over. Ba- well, I it guess the started a lot was sooner. Built. Started yeah, a started lot did. sooner. There's a whole Clone War. and Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So there's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> it's a whole Order 66, a whole. And I just want to, I just want to go on record and saying, this is probably for me. Like it's, Job of the Hut's just impossible to replicate. You can't do it again. He doesn't look as good any other way. Like in the animated, like his animated look is just kind of weird. Yeah, it's always like, weird. It, it has to be because how the fuck do you do that again? <laughs> How the fuck do you replicate that? You do that once. You can't do that again. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't, I don't know what to tell you. That's my least favorite Boba Fett. Mm. He's a fuck boy. <laughs> Why? Why the? <laughs> if you know, you know. <laughs> what? Uh, I, I, I'm not in the know here. I guess. No, nah, he's just a douchebag about like the whole slave one thing. The the yeah. ship the ship Boba Fett the Boba Fett ship name change even though it wasn't a name change it was just for a Lego box and he oh, was like like he, who was he in, briefly played was Boba Austin, Fett uh, yeah it's like Mark he he was added in in the special editions he gets like three and a half minutes of screen time in total and he felt like he he's entitled 
to the whole Boba Fett moniker. And <laughs> and it was hilarious when they released that under the under the helmet Boba Fett special. He is completely and utterly left out. He is not <laughs> a part of it. Oh man. Which I was like so pleasant. Wow. So pleasantly surprised to see. Crazy that like these name changes get people so riled up. Like the Washington Redskins. Like Redskin is basically a slur. Yeah, like you need to get that name like the fuck straight out of here. up. It's ba- it's a slur. Like yo, and why like, the uh, fuck are you upset that your team names the Cleveland Guardians? That's dope. Like Indians, they're not Indians. They're Native Americans. The dude, Columbus thought he was in India. Like they're not Indians. Like it's just wrong, you know. And like you're portraying, like you sh- like. I don't know. Yeah. No, and like no, yeah. slave one. It's a kid. It's for kids. You know? Yeah. This is for kids. It's fine to not have the word slave on a Lego box. <laughs> exactly. That makes sense in my mind, you yeah. know, like. Just a ridiculous yeah. controversy. And there are so many in the Star Wars fandom. Hmm. Jump to hyperspace though. How they about the, nailed uh, the look? Like, oh, dude, they nailed it. They nailed. How like, about the first, uh, in order of film release, the first. Now this is where the fun begins, coming from Han Solo, and then Anakin Skywalker later on saying it in the prequels. That's awesome. This is where the fun begins. This. God. Oh my. Oh. Ah. Fuck. That was fantastic. I wonder what this movie, like, say George was born, like, later, and this movie releases, like, now, with the technology we have now. Like, how different it'd be. Dude, you like, can't even, we can't even fathom. Like, like, what like, would George, what like, if, like, what if they just remade the movie? Like, didn't change a thing about the story. What if you did just remake the movie with the... And that's the beauty of it. I don't even know that... I don't want that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I appreciate how they did this when they did this. Because it elevates... Yeah. It, it It's elevated us to the point where we can even fathom the idea of what a Rogue One looks like. You know what I'm saying? Because Rogue One is the effects we're looking at. True. And what this would be like. Uh, it's just, it's just, ah, damn. Leia goes through it, man. Uh, This is absolutely fucking devastating. Your whole planet? I think... There w- wasn't there a deleted scene where it showed the people of Alderaan like getting blown up, and like they just cut it out because it was like, like they just didn't like. They were like, "That's a that's a bit." Much. That was either in a sequel movie or this. Well, like, I remember uh, in a sequel movie they showed the people running on like uh, the the core the the home of the New Republic. Halcyon 5 or something like that. I might mm. be completely butchering that, but uh, I'm not sure. And we witnessed the power of the Death Star on Alderaan. That's billions gone. Instantly. Just like that. That's uh... And Obi-Wan feeling those effects, thinking back to Yoda during order 66 that's what it takes me back to every time mm. Mm. I love yoda how just won is here mm. he's like yoda won that one battle like the whole like at this all would not be happening like 
Vader just took down Palpatine there at the end of Revenge of the Sith. Dude, that 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 retired Yoda. Like he couldn't take it after that. Yoda said, "I'm out." He's like, "Dang, I really could have stopped everything that just happened, and I failed." Like, like he was right to feel like he had to have felt just the most guilty, like out of probably anyone in the galaxy. Like. We don't even know Yoda yet. Like, it's crazy. Like, he hadn't even uh, caught up at this point. Nope. Wow. Yoda, another character that they were just never able to replicate the way he looked in that first appearance again. Uh, Not even in Return of the Jedi do they quite match what he looked like in the first appearance, Mm -hmm. which is just crazy. Like, you do that once, you can't guarantee you'll get it done again. Mm. God, and that iconic helmet that we've seen in so much since then, and the little dr- the little drone ball. God, and to get the con- the contrasting scene in The Force Awakens in that very same room where he goes, it's true. <laughs> All of it. Uh, yeah, I knew him. I knew Luke. He, he saw a lot to make him believe. That's for sure. <laughs> that's to be certain. Like... Luke's kind of the Star Wars equivalent of Jesus. <laughs> like I'd say, yeah. like uh in Han's basically like a disciple. Like he like He was there for the, the ride, he saw the shit happen. Yeah, like that dude like witnessed the great like the goat Luke's the goat, like in that galaxy, you know, like undisputed. Like it's Luke Skywalker. He's a he's fucking legend. legend. He did he did something so unbelievable that people don't even think he's real. God, like, that's, that's legendary crazy. status that is a legendary status mm. no you're not no I did feel something I could almost see the remote oh buddy you don't even know you're gonna be slicing and dicing up some robots here in a few, like five years, six years, seven years, eight years. Making me cry so Making hard. Making me cry as you take Grogu off to train him. You're gonna be dominating, man. You don't even know yet. You're gonna be in your prime. Hmm. <laughs> this old look. Kill your daughter. Your face. <laughs> Kill your daughter immediately. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, murderer. How about a falling out of hyperspace at a planet and the planet's not there? Wouldn't that uh wouldn't that kind of shake you up a little bit? I love that Obi Wan was like, Yep, destroyed by the Empire. I think I think I know what this is. Uh, they're heading towards that moon. Yeah, that's not a moon. There's no moon. You're just kind of like hoping for the best right now. Like, maybe it's not true. Maybe it's not true. Ah, okay. Obi-Wan knows. He just doesn't, yeah, he just doesn't. He's just not saying it. shit yet. He's like, nah, like. Nah, nah, please. And the fact that they get pulled into a tractor beam here and a little bit so damn far away from the space station. <laughs> just because it has that big of a fucking reach. That's no move. Yeah, here we get the this sense of scale. Yeah. It's fucking fantastic. Full reverse, not gonna go through, not gonna not gonna happen, buddy. You are now in the Empire's grasp.
God, it just pulls me in sometimes. I can't help but just lose myself in the in the fucking movie. Mm. I love these early moments with Han and Luke just because they go so far. They they both grow so much. They're so immature right now. Oh, so it is cute seeing them right here, knowing what God. they grow into. Like, ah. Oh. Those little himbos. There you go. That's the oh, shot. Oh, my God. <laughs> we were like, excuse me? That's like, like oh. a tiny part of the Death Star. And it's still like 500 times the size of this fucking ship. And this is the smallest of the Death Stars. Yeah. I love how they kind of, like, pass it off as a joke now. Like, oh, Death Star 1 or 2. Like, uh... <laughs> like... I love the joke they make in the holiday, the Lego holiday special, where, uh... Darth Vader's talking to Palpatine, he's like, No, it's just Death Star 2. Mm. Seems a bit derivative. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, I guess if it ain't itself. broke, don't fix it. Like, it was a good weapon, and like, a good idea, like, Space Station. Yeah, and I guess, like, if that's just, like... You know, it's a model. It's not the name of the... Sh it's, it is a Death Star. That's what Ideally, it is. Ideally, they would have multiple of them. Yeah, like... like it's and not if you have an exact same model, you're just going to name it something new all of a sudden? Like... True. Yeah. No, you go... Well, that's also... The, the thing is, is they probably, they probably... They probably just had to call it a Death Star 2 because people would have been like... Didn't they blow the first Death Star up? Yeah. <laughs> like, this is a little confusing. I mean, I, as a kid, I probably got it confused a little bit. Oh, yeah. Already, certainly. like, even with the, the name. As much as I loved this franchise for a lot of my life, there was just a lot of it I just straight up wasn't getting, you know? <laughs> I was just yeah. like, this all looks really cool. <laughs> Like, the the whole politics side of, like, the prequel movies, like... Oh, co completely over my head every time. I just saw lightsabers. Who's the fool? The, the more foolish or the fool who follows him? Like, Choose summing up Star them, Wars yeah. is really, like, one of the only things that can be for any age at all. It's meant for kids, but also an adult can fully still enjoy this movie. Like, be, just because of how detailed it is. Like, Oh, absolutely. And I do think there – it is interesting. I do think there's certainly something to the idea that I don't think you – I think it's important that you connect with this at a young age because mm. uh, if you don't, it, it is hard to connect with. There, there's just no doubt about it. Uh, especially at this point, because it it has carved out such a uh, such a large sect of pop culture, like it is extremely well known, but is also like to some people still just the the geeky space franchise. Mm -hmm. So it's like, no, nah, I'm good, and I get that, I do get that, uh, but you know, it's just uh, it's just worth the shot. It's absolutely mm. worth the shot, even if you're a first timer. Always, it. I'm. It's timeless. God, those doors shut real fucking fast. Is one of my one of my favorite scenes in the whole movie. Just begins here. This entire the entire time they're on the mm. Death Star, pretty much is pretty mm. much my favorite part of this movie. Uh, the first time they all come together. God, it's just it's just gold all the way through. I don't want to skip to it. It'll it'll happen eventually. I just got to let it happen. Uh Look at like they had to create all of these all everything here. The blueprints, like, the sets, the the scanning, oh. the scanners, the lights just all of it is built, hand built. I love like 
how obviously they had to not move while these doors open super so slowly could, uh, behind them and like yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. And I love that, like, uh, they made this movie in the 70s, obviously, with the. And George Lucas has always said that he, he made it with the intent of it being timeless. Uh, so they tried not to do anything too specific with hairstyles or anything like that. But <laughs> you just can't escape the 70s, George. That's just not something you can do, man. Uh, as you can see with Luke Skywalker's lovely head of hair. That's pretty seventies. I mean, it's it's seeped its way through. It's it's been it's been a part of pop culture for quite some time, and it's definitely a, a head of hair that is common. But it got its birth there in the seventies. <laughs> uh, that's for sure. Uh, and there, are imperi- guess, like Imperials with the long sideburns, mm-hmm. like oh, uh, yeah, you can't you can't escape the seventies. You can't escape seventies. Yeah. Seventies hair, just too iconic. It's iconic in itself. Legendary. <laughs> I love how Hans just like you know what? No, I did enough. I did good. I think I'm. I think I'm cool. Wait a minute. More money. <laughs> yes, mommy. Mm-hmm. She's a princess, you know. <laughs> Rich, powerful. <laughs> He's like, I don't know if you. I don't think you know how much money I can imagine. <laughs> like, I, uh, I've got some pretty, got some pretty big aspirations. <laughs> I don't think she's really going to be paying me all that well. I wonder what Han's net worth is. Like, can't can't be uh at this point. He's he's severely he's struggling. In debt. Yeah, he's struggling right now. Yeah, because if he had the money, he'd be not wanted through the next couple movies by a bounty hunter. Uh, the only time he might be comfortable is come the Force Awakens. Whenever uh. He's running his own little freighter thing. But that's still because he swindled everybody into getting there, as you see with the Kanja Club. <laughs> and uh, all those. Tell that to Kanja Club. Yeah, I, I never guess made I'm... a deal with Kanja Club. I guess Han really doesn't know. Uh... It's not it's really that well. It's hustle, but. Yeah. Man, does it never <laughs> reap its benefits. He's just always on the run. He just needed that adventure, man. Mm. What an impressive costume there for Chewie. That'd be so hot in that thing. Dude, so hot. Peter Mayhew just kills it. What a legendary performance. Last time I saw Luke come out of an elevator like that. Ooh-wee. Freaking cr- creamed my pants. Creamed my pants. Metaphorically. Oh, Darth Vader. And, and Obi-Wan knows the layout. He knows where to go. Come on, bro. He's been on the Death Star. You been on the Death Star, bruh. I just like yeah. I would love a scene where Obi Wan sneaks onto the Death Star and sneaks his way all the way right up to Anakin's meditation chamber. All right up to that bitch. Could you imagine? What would he do? Do they just like, like, can you imagine if they had just to talk? Because while Vader would be meditating, he would definitely sense like Obi-Wan. Yeah. You think they would just have like a talk? No. 
Vader right. would open up and yeah, it, he'd be on site. Yeah, like he'd be on site. That's that's for sure. But could you imagine if they did just talk? Because it when he's in that meditation chamber, he's like in full he's getting more angry. Mode. He's getting yeah. more angry. Yeah. So like he's already pissed. True. If he True. S- sensed Obi Wan was right outside of it, he'd be like, "Oh, let's get the fuck out this bitch. I'm ready." Yeah. Like, oh, you're here. <laughs> I love this scene with Han. <laughs> We're fine. We're all fine here. We're good. How are you? Don't need anything. <laughs> Very dangerous. <laughs> He's such a fucking dweeb. It was a boring conversation anyway. God, and they maintain that prisoner look. Like, I think, to the Clone Wars. Those cells were down the stairs and with a little block there. Like, they they maintained oh, that yeah. look through and through. I think uh, Jedi Fallen Order. You run down a few of those with the, mm-hmm. with some Wookiees on the inside. Obi-Wan Kenobi. Yes, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Of course, Obi-Wan Kenobi. (laughs) Vader's like, bruh, how many times I gotta tell you, bruh, why you think Emperor Palpatine is still the fucking Emperor, bruh? Vader, like, he's the... Either one or two, like most powerful being in the galaxy. So, like, I don't know why any of them try to talk to him like they're anything compared to him. You know, like it's fascinating. It makes me think that like Vader's got to have a relationship with Palpatine that's like obviously fueled by hate. Mm. And therein, I, I'd be willing to bet the way Palpatine tries to motivate Vader more is by favoring guys like Tarkin. And uh, Thrawn Mm. and treating these guys better than he treats Vader because anything to make Vader a little more angry. You know what I'm saying? Man, Palpatine. Just a manipulative son of a bitch. He's the Ultron. He's the the Star Wars. God. We're about to get to the fucking garbage shoot. And who better to get us there? You know what I'm saying? Give than, me that. Uh, than our royalty. Mm-hmm. This is some rescue. I love the like 40s inspired dialogue. <laughs> what the hell are you doing? <laughs> End of the garbage Fly, shit, boy. Boy. <laughs> Like, it's a, it's a cereal, dude. Like, this is, like, some straight from the 1940s, bro. Get in there, you big furry elf. Just the loud, fast, always faster, more intensity. Always faster, mm. more intensity. God, the music. It just adds so much to any given scene. All, all the music, like God, John Williams is just a freaking. He's masterful, and obviously he's uh, composed for at least Jaws so far for us. I don't know if he's had a hand in any of the other films that we've we've given a viewing of so far. I don't believe he has. But it also won't be his last. I know in a few weeks here we'll be doing uh, Indiana Jones Raiders of the Lost Ark. Mm-hmm. And then, and then we got another John Williams. Jurassic Park. Yep. Um, a, much, a little later. That's him. Um, yeah, I don't know of any others. I love that here. they're just like, yeah, there's a creature in the garbage chute. 
No, we'll never find it. <laughs> what an interesting... Uh... How did it get there? Just That's a good question. You know? It's they're in the middle of space. Like it's not, not like, like it's it not, just it's not like it just like crawled on board. This is a complete base made from scratch, you know. It's not like they started like with a planet like Scar Star Killer base or something like True. Did they like maybe it's like their version of an incinerator instead of like burning the trash, you just have a monster eat it. Maybe. <laughs> maybe it's just easier that way. Yeah, you don't you don't gotta like fuel it. Like you don't you know, an incinerator, you gotta burn something. God you damn, that's something. a monster. Just it's in, really yeah. wrapped around this man. That would be that would suck right there. Oh god, that's like, just the nastiest shit you've ever seen in your life. Just horrifying to look at. <laughs> he just he's he's what I, I don't know. Just like fuck if I know, it just that's just that man. <laughs> Never to be seen from again. That line, that monster's gone. It's the one line that's guaranteed in every movie. I got a bad feeling about this. I got a bad feeling about this. I love the inverse of it in Solo. Whenever Han goes, I got a good feeling about this. <laughs> That movie is underrated, man. Ah, it 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 just deserved. It came better. out at such a weird time. It did, and they marketed it very, not very well. Yeah, just uh, sad. I like knowing that this is the only one we'll be live commentarying for this project in specific because I can reference all the other movies and feel good mm. about it. Yeah, instead of saving talk for mm. those movies, you know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. I can get I can get all of them out now. It's Here all comes a bonk. Wars, oh, the bonk in the oh, uh yep. bonk they even added time. the sound effect. Yeah, they instead of you know removing it, keep it in there. Like the uh mm-hmm. outstanding. Django Fett bumps his head in uh the prequels in an homage to it. Mm. Which is absolutely outstanding. <laughs> Three PO Come in, 3PO! <laughs> like, what are you going to do, you know? They had to maintain cover. But, you know, they're about to die. Yeah. Yeah, that, that'd, be a, that'd be a tough way to go. And I'm not going to lie to you. If this is the first time I'm watching this movie, it's not until, like the moment here in a second with 3PO that I'm like, okay, okay, cool. This character's mm. kind of funny. Uh, I just absolutely love it. Whenever he's like, oh no, they're all dying. Oh, listen to them. They're dying. Yeah, yeah like, exactly. <laughs> And I love, and it, this really is the first thing that brings them all together, is this near-death experience in this garbage shoot. The way they celebrate, it's like, holy shit, we just beat death together. Now we're binded forever. True. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Forever. <laughs> Ted ass. Like, our yeah. lives are forever changed because of this garbage shoot. We could have just died here. <laughs> Instead, we have a whole history, whole mythology. Why would you try to keep it out? Like, why would you try to push? You know you're not going to be stronger than it. Like, you should just get as flat as you can, you know? Yeah, like, just yeah. brace yourself for sweet, sweet death. I love it. 
it's a lot of garbage shoots. Yeah. Like you got to think there needs to be like that many though. Cause if it's a, if it's the size of a room. moon, like yeah, like that's so many. There needs like shoots. to be that many garbage. Yeah, like that's insane. Like at least a garbage shoot per level. Multiple garbage shoots Multiple per, level. per level. Like it's a it's a moon. Like there's like tens of thousands per level, probably. You know, like <laughs> at least thousands per per yeah. level. Yeah, at least a thousand. How many levels are there to the Death Star? <laughs> Here we've got me and uh, me and my girlfriend's Halloween costumes mm. on full display. With yeah, Han, look. And Han and Leia here. Mm. Glad, uh, glad I could get you a gun in time. Glad the oh. holster wasn't empty. Holster, holster had to be filled, and I appreciate you filling it for me, buddy. Oh, yeah, uh, and so. I don't mean that sexually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a uh, it was a fun project. Uh, I'm, I I mean, obviously, I liked it so much, I did it again. Um. I just haven't painted painted it yet. I'll get. Yeah, to it. I still haven't okay. gotten around to doing that either. I have it all. I have it taken apart again. Like I'm gonna, I'm gonna detail it and stuff. I just don't know when. Yeah, I, I like super glued a lot of this. Like it's like stuck in place now. Like a lot of it is. I yeah. just said screw it. Like uh, I'll paint it all together. Like I, I won't need to take it apart ever again. I feel I'd rather it just be you. like hella. But. Oh. Out gassing. Don't worry. The fan recreation of this fight, like, have you it's seen? It's pretty epic. Like, what's crazy though? What's like crazy that, like, though is that this fight at the time is like semi groundbreaking. That's true. There's like still the so many that, lightsabers, like, and that the idea of a lightsaber is like crazy. Exactly, like, and that shot there at the at the very end of the fight, and we'll, we'll ultimately get there. Like, that's that's like, a, <laughs> what the fuck just happened? I love Han. Oh man! Oh shit! Oh shit! Run the other way, motherfucker! Chewie doesn't question. He's like, yep, yep. He's like, if Han's right. running, we're running. <laughs> I love that he was willing to just do that for the for the crew, though. Because he's just like, he likes to act like he's the bad guy. Deep down, man. But he's a hero. He'll sacrifice himself for the squad, even when he just met the squad. Mm. I love that he, like, shut that shit shot the shit and was like fuck we really needed the shit <laughs> oops and this is one of the worst gunfights in uh <laughs> cinema history where nobody hits anybody except for maybe once Luke gets somebody <laughs> yeah there you go and the dude just I jumps think, I think Leia has Leia more success than Luke yeah. yeah Leia Leia's on one yeah, Leia's, Leia's the shits with the blaster. Near miss. Ah, uh, yeah. Two, I don't know. Three. Okay. But she's... Yeah. I like I like that they're like, okay, we can only get this partially opened. <laughs> it would definitely, like, just stick their gun. Yeah, just... Pew, 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 pew. I mean, For that life. would hurt your ankles real bad, man. You wouldn't be able to move. No. That's it. Yeah, with no feet or ankle or leg. Exactly. Mm. Ah, the lightsaber. It's beautiful. Wasn't even ignited or anything, but you saw the... You just saw the details in that shot pretty well. I liked it. I liked it a lot. To think it's just made with random pipes and stuff from like home depot that they found like yeah. random just just random things thrown together they're like, like yeah this would be cool god
on site. <laughs> Bro, he, he walked around the corner. Lightsaber was already out. On before sight. Like, <laughs> on feeling. The circle is now complete. I... I also love that they can, like, ignite their lightsaber slowly or fast. Mm. It's just kind of like, I don't know, However whatever the feel. moment calls for. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, sometimes you need that slow, just... Just like, I'm going to let them know I'm ready for this shit. Mm-hmm. Other times, it could just be like, and it's out. It's been, it, like, it's... If you strike me down, mm. I, shall, I shall become more powerful than you could possibly imagine. And boy, oh boy, is that true as ever. You shouldn't have come back. That's the line. That's the one. That makes you go, ah, he's been there before. I love the flashes on screen whenever they make contact. Mm. Like that, there. God, I just wish, like, the only thing that could add, like, that could add so much is if, uh, like, the lightsaber glare, like, would reflect off, like, them. Oh, like, yeah, yeah. That's, like, the only thing, like, they just couldn't do. Like, if, if you could remake, like, and just add that, like, imagine Vader's suit, like, with <sighs> just red... Like, because it's a lightsaber, you know, that's like a, oh, oh, come on, man. And here, come on, man. The last thing Ben sees is the children he separated, reunited. He has completed his mission. His mission is complete and he is ready to go. Looks over. He Mm -hmm. said, bet. (laughs) <laughs> yes. He said, haha. Bye, bitch. And you know Vader kept that lightsaber, too. Oh, yeah. That's a sentimental motherfucker right there. What happens if Vader gets through there? <laughs> yeah. He Do we force grabs the Falcon. Holding the Millennium Falcon. Yeah, the... yeah like... <laughs> Ooh. And Obi-Wan also made sure he got that... Got that shit shut down for him. Mm-hmm. He knew. He's he been knew. on the Death Star before. Yeah, he got that shit. He knows what he's doing. You should not have come back. Did they really plan for that? Like, no, no. That's that's a, that's just a line that happened to wor- that happens to fit well, and can work. Uh, I think it's more of a yeah. You shouldn't have come here more. Like uh, they, you know, they did say come back. They didn't say come they, here. They knew. Like it could be just referring to. Uh... Like, just if they truly separated at Mustafar, like, that was truly the last time they saw each other. Like, him, him just referring to, like, come back. Like, you should not have, like, come back to see me. Like Yeah, you shouldn't have come back into my life. Yeah, like, uh, that's probably what they're going for, you know, at yeah, this time. for sure. They know, like, George knew, like, the Mustafar moment. Like, he, like, that was already... That's from, that's from scratch, yeah. Or not scratch, but... Like... At this time, does he know? Like, is he written that? I think like, he hadn't. He hasn't written it, but he had the idea of what happened to Luke's dad. Yeah, he all. had to have no. Like the whole, he had to have written Anakin's story. Like, or not had in to entirety, have known, but the big moment. Yeah, he had yeah. to have known. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Get our first dog fight. Like, real dog fight. Man, the TIE Fighters used to be loud. Loud as fuck. Now, like... 
they're like cleaner. It's yeah. like it's like a cleaner uh like sound. It feels like there's more white noise involved in these ones. This is like screeching. Like this is yeah. like a a creature like I'm just like I don't know like like I I want to hear this whenever I hear a tie fighter, you know, like mm. God, and the way they, they the the blowing up effect in space because there's no fire, it's just sparks and then they're gone. Mm. All the miniature, like all these ships are miniatures. Like yeah, just being and they legitimately blew them up. Like when they blew up, fixed. yeah, like yeah. that's crazy. Like. That's, like, some of the only visual effects, like, in the, or, like, CGI. That's, like, first, yeah. like, first, what is that? That is something, like, big. Like, uh. Like, some of the first computer-generated imaging. Yeah, it was, shit. uh. I don't know what, it, I don't know. I just know so, too many. Star Wars facts that like they start to overlap. Yeah. <laughs> it won't. <laughs> easy. You call that easy. They have a little bit of a little bit of a thing there from the get go. You think a princess and a guy like me? <laughs> he, he's smooth, you know. Even though yeah, he's, he's a... smooth with it, he knows what he's doing. I think it'd be funny if when he was talking to Obi Wan, he was like, "Yo, wait, <laughs> you telling me my ex girlfriend now works for a dude you cut in half?" Weird connection Han and Obi Wan now have. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> For a dude, I cut in half. Obi Wan really likes to chop people in half. Maul. He does. It, he does it quite a bit. Uh, when he when he is it to... only Maul and Anakin? I guess Anakin's not really in half. But... He likes cutting off limbs. Mm-hmm. You could say that. What do you think? A princess and a guy like me? <laughs> no. <laughs> Luke was like, not here for the shit at all. No. Fuck no. I don't know yet, but that's my sister. <laughs> Why does every, like, good thing have to involve some weird form of family intermingling, you know? Like, why? Like, Game of Thrones. You know, like, Star... Like, I guess this is, like, very mild. Hardly. It's very, very mild. God, but like, I do love these. I love these early shots of Yavin. Mm. And Poncho Luke. Praise be Poncho Luke. Mm. <laughs> I love it whenever everybody in Star Wars is wearing ponchos. That's when I'm happiest. You just give me a good poncho. Cal Kestis. Cal Has Kestis, some rocking baby. ponchos in that game, man. Several mm. rocking ponchos. I rock the pink one. Straight hot pink. Quite a lot. I'd be rocking the orange one. Mm. And I'd be, you know, you got to coincide it with the BD1 paint job you got going on, mm-hmm. obviously. Man, that game's so cool. Oh, it's fantastic. BD-1 is one of my favorite droids of all time, and I always remember it every time I play that fucking game. Mm. Clockwork Orange vibes here in this scene. I'm not going to cap. Straight off rip. They rip? Wait, repeat? Clockwork Orange vibes. From off this? Off rip here, yeah. Just visually. Mm. Okay. Yeah. 
the the whole schematic what's that place called the like bought milk bar i don't know like oh yeah the milk bar kind of like i get like those vibes like yeah uh, for sure it's just that, the decor mm. and the orange the orange suits most of the white it's all all just white in there mhm they're like nah, that's that's There's too more small CGI. yeah how the fuck how the fuck are we going to do that mm. Looks like, come on, I have the force. You could do it too. Can you can you imagine uh, being a farmer and then going to space? Uh, They're like, yeah, you're going to fight this war for us, buddy. And then hearing a voice in your head that's like, turn off the computer, trust your instincts, use the force, and then doing it and then actually blowing up the Death Star? like, Yeah, it, it'd kind of be like, Okay, so there's there's some uh, there's some weird shit going on with me. Uh, I'd be like, I don't know, either I'm going crazy and a lot of shit is going right for me, or like if I'm going crazy, it ain't a bad thing. Uh, That's but crazy. It's been an hour and forty five minutes. No, yeah, we we end this hoe. It That's just goes crazy. by. Like we're, I, already, I... we're already to the final act. We're about to be in the Battle of Yavin. Just like got some old debts I gotta pay off. We we follow through on those those debts he's gotta pay off. Obviously he doesn't uh he doesn't pay them off. He never does. He never does. He never made a deal with Conja Club. He's <laughs> <laughs> He's got a good point, you know. Han's like, you know what? Fuck this, man. I'm I, like, we are not gonna win this. It's it's unreasonable for him to think so, you know. As a member of, you know, not the rebellion, he is just a bounty hunter. It's it does make sense he'd think this way, but you know, Luke's right. You got to take a stand at some point. Mm-hmm. Where are you going? Where are you going to land? And he eventually comes back. Han comes back. You know, he comes back. He, uh, he says I he can't. wasn't coming, but he came. You he know, always he, do. He couldn't stay away. He can't resist his hero moment, baby. Mm-hmm. Mm. He loves being the hero, even when even he loves letting out a good Yahoo. Mm. Classic. Yahoo! I only wish Ben were here. Mwah. Love you, sis. <laughs> So, like, do you think Leia, like, do you think Leia... Feels anything? So, like, okay, Luke has never been told that he had a sister, but do you think Leia was told that she had a brother? Um, not necessarily, I think that that would be something she would have actively tried looking for. Uh, like, if she had a sibling, she probably would have tried to look for that sibling. I think that just makes sense to me. So I think it was probably a conversation her and Bale just hadn't had yet. But, like, uh, she knows Obi-Wan. I feel like Leia, like, knows... a lo- like, All the stories already, kind of? I don't of? know. Like, I, I feel like she kind of knows... Maybe not like everything. I don't know. It just it just seems like kind of wild if she didn't, because like she knows Obi Wan. But like, does she just know Obi Wan because Bale says she, all she knows is you fought with my father in the Clone Wars? Yeah. Like hmm. Bale could have just said he's a Jedi Knight. We need his help. True. God, I love the X Wings getting gassed up and everyone mm. getting ready to go battle against the fucking Death Star. What the hell? Against the goddamn Death Star? That's suicide. At least according to Han. 
God, I love these shots of them leaving the atmosphere. How did that boy get up there? Ah, uh, you know, that thing probably goes up and down. <laughs> oh, sure. <laughs> it probably gets raised up there. That's a that's, that's a claustrophobic job. You can't move at oh, all. Oh, yeah, you can't like, come down? Bro, you can't move. Like, that. you can spin. That's it. You can rotate. You can't really be moving those legs, for there's real. No, for real. Yeah, there's no motion, though. <laughs> I'm just trying to see you dance in slow motion. Happy Thanksgiving, Joey. Let's blow up the Death Star. Heck yeah. Let's uh let's let's up Luke's kill count like a couple bill. Is it a bill? And uh, who, no, many... it's like three hundred mil. Okay. That's <laughs> yeah. Let's let's up it a couple hundred mil. You know. Let's let's solidify this guy's name in the in the galaxy, the history books. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he blew up a pl- a planet sized space station, <laughs> uh, pretty much on his own. Uh, I also love that they uh, the person who was Red Five uh, gets blown up in Rogue One, so that the slot Red Five is open for Luke Skywalker to take in this movie. Mm. Just a fun little detail that's like, damn, that's rough, but you know, had to happen. Force works in mysterious ways. That dude had to die. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, if he's like, you know, in the afterlife and he's like, okay, well, I mean, if someone were to take over my my ship, I'd, I'd say Luke is... Luke Skywalker's a pretty good option. I'd say okay. Yeah, that's, that's that's pretty cool. I'd be telling all my yeah, friends in heaven, like, occupy yeah, my ship, Luke, yeah, that's my ship, actually, yeah. that blew up the Death Star, so. Fuck yourselves, <laughs> I win. I'm basically Luke Skywalker. <laughs> he lives on, I live on through him, frankly. <laughs> he just takes full responsibility for Luke's achievements <laughs> in the afterlife. <laughs> It's always funny to think about, like, you, you see, like, explosions on the outside of the Death Star, but, like, you don't think, like, there's people, like, right on the other side, like, manning the, like, weapons and stuff that, yeah, like, like, are they dying, were you know? it's Yeah, it's, like, it's just weird to think about. Now, there are millions, hundreds of millions of people in there. <laughs> Do you think there's people just sleeping during this? Like, Oh, there's like, almost yeah, certainly yeah. people who, like, aren't doing shit. <laughs> They're just, they went to bed, Death Star blew up, you know? That's probably the most peaceful way to be on the Death Star at the time it blows up, frankly. Like, there's no, like, like, right now there's alarms going off, but, like, do you think it's the whole Death Star is going off? Like, every single yeah, alarm? Yeah, it's like, there's no way, because, like, what can you do at a certain point? Like, if you're what, at, is like, everybody, if is you're, like, every near the single- inside... Like, is every single bit of that hundred of millions of people preparing for battle? No. What if, like, they are, though? What if this is every man on deck right now? Like, what if they got everyone somewhere right now? Like, no well, it's way. Like, who else would be on the Death Star? It'd just be a bunch of Imperial employees, right? Like, it's like... I guess they're like, all doing something. Finn like was just like a janitor. So I guess there's just like, you know, those kind of people. Um, are they like readying up for battle right now? Are they in battle position right now? You know, like are they, are they getting prepared? Yeah. Like, or are they just like, I'm just the janitor here. Like, I don't know. I don't know. Like, what do I do? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, shit, man. Does this, uh, does this really concern me? Can I go back to bed? Am I just going to the toilet? So now I'm going to blow up for this. Like <laughs> that would suck. Let me uh, let me excuse myself to my to my quarters. Get one last little nap in. Mm. God, I love the, the like maps they have in the war room for the rebellion. It's my absolute favorite aesthetic they have in the Star Wars universe. Is the rebellion mm. aesthetic. They just really kill it there. I mean, what a shot! That might not be true. Naboo's got a pretty, a pretty sick aesthetic. That place is fantastic. 
I th- yeah, thinking of like best aesthetic in all of Star Wars. Naboo's up there. Bespin, Cloud City. Mm. It's kind of up there. Exegol. Is that what it's called? Everybody in a black robe. <laughs> that's that's a whole different aesthetic. That's a real dark aesthetic. God, I love the the trench run. Trench run here on the Death Star. And this is the best star pilot in the whole galaxy. Right. Uh, yeah, the greatest star pilot in the history of the galaxy. Who takes him out? Han Sizzle. Whenever he's just fl- flinging out, like, they didn't think to, like, just shoot that, you know, like, they 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 blew up the other two TIE fighters there. Why not go ahead and take that last shot, make sure Darth Vader dies? <laughs> like... It's for kids. It's a story. It's for kids. It's for kids. They they left it open for Darth Vader to come back in Empire Strikes. Obviously, back. he had to. They're not just going to say I want him to as well. Fighter. Yeah, like <laughs> I don't know. Could have been our first example of a. Uh, could have set precedent for the moment of Princess Leia and the Last Jedi. He just floats back <laughs> to a ship. <laughs> that would be kind of sick. You ain't gonna get there though, cuz. What if that's actually. What if that happens? Obi Wan comes during the construction of the Death Star. Anakin gets blown out of a window and has that moment. So, like, it. Oh, it sets. It, it retroactively sets precedent for the late. Oh, I don't. We might have just did something, Joe. We might have just did something. Because, guess what? Obi-Wan has to make it out of that fight, too. And it's only one way he makes it out of that fight for me. He wins. Well, he can't win. Well, not all the way, but as much as he he doesn't lose. Yeah, because he doesn't die. He just either escapes. Like, he has to escape. Yeah, for me, for me, Kenobi, Kenobi not dying is him winning. True. In that scenario, like that's true. Like if you make it out of a scenario with Vader where you fought and you you lived through that experience, you won. <laughs> At least on paper. Not many people can say they had an encounter with Darth Vader because they usually can't speak um, or do anything at all. Um, they're dead. They usually, yeah, they can't live to tell the tale. <laughs> it's usually not, uh, usually not on the table for them. And here we go. Let's get it, baby. Let's blow this fucking Death Star and get out of this bitch. Mm. Battle of Yavin won. Are you not sure quite the though. You took and hit it into the thick of it. Into the thick of it. Huh. Hmm. Those cannons ain't worth shit <laughs> that the Death Star got. They don't make a goddamn bit of contact. Mm-mm. You know that who could have made contact? Who? Clones. Just saying. If the Empire wasn't so damn cheap. It's true. Why? But I also don't want them to keep enslaving the clones. I also don't want them to keep enslaving people. I'd rather the Empire just didn't exist. Uh, <laughs> I guess this is a step in that direction. They had to... Uh, Why are the to... Empire's lasers green and the Republic's red? Like, 
Like, what's the significance behind it? Like, red's the bad color, you know, like, sit, you know, like, it, like... It confused me for a while, too, when I was younger. I was like, wait, I thought it makes sense if the X-Wing shot green and the TIE Fighter shot red. Yeah, because, like, in the TIE... Yeah, like, look, in the inside of the TIE Fighter, it's, like, red. It makes sense. And, like, yeah, I don't know. Because, like, originally, no, that was not this. Was it the, because Return of the Jedi was Revenge of the Jedi. Who's the false Luke? Yeah. But Luke had a red lightsaber and Vader had a blue lightsaber. But that was at the, on the poster, but that was the third move. Yeah. But by that time, what? I just confused myself. <laughs> like in the poster, Luke had a red lightsaber, Vader had blue. But that's the third movie, and by the time like we already know Vader has a red, you know, like yeah. it's already established. So like why in that poster was it I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Hmm. I want that poster. Oh, that poster's so fucking badass. Like an an actual original, oh. I wonder how much. Use the force, Luke. Blow that bitch up. But first, Han Solo, get this man off his back. Shouts, shout. Yeah. What a fucking legend! He just like floats off all willy nilly. That's a nut. And here we go, baby. <clears throat> 300 mil. Including 300 mil. Tarkin. That's a high right, profile Tarkin. Beautiful in its destruction. Great shot, kid. That was one in a million. <laughs> God, I love it. <laughs> Invader's just like, yep, guess I'll fly. <laughs> he just goes. He's just like, I'll find somewhere. <laughs> I just wish so badly in that part that like Han and Luke just would have like kissed a little bit. <laughs> Given into the... Like, the just like a little, yeah, just yeah. like one little, one little kiss on the lips, like and I just that save like the galaxy, pretty much. That's like I feel that's like, huge. Yeah, that's, that, that's pretty huge. That is pretty huge. And it was because of those two. Like he gets Vader off his back. Luke take Luke takes the shot. Need both of them for it to succeed. Mm, it's funny jacket. how Han gets, to, Han gets to show up at the last second and. Everyone else was there the whole fucking time. And they're probably just like, God damn it, this fucking guy. Now he gets to be a general. He showed up at the last second of a battle. Pretty clutch, though. Oh, he's huge. He's huge. Don't get me wrong. I fucking love him. But I could see how a high-ranking officer in the rebellion <laughs> might resent. Like, ah, come fact. on, man. Wow, this feels kind of, he's grandfathered in. Come on. Hey, come on. Come on. Have you seen the, this without the music and how awkward it is? Like, uh, with just, like, the silence, like, of it? Uh. Well, what's awesome is I think there was, there's, like, actually supposed to be a band there, like, that would be playing this. Mm. Mm. Did they... That's how I've always interpreted the Yavin ceremony. Did they have the band there like while filming? Uh that's probably a that's probably a retroactive thing. Like probably did they or did, the... did they have the music recorded bef- like before filming started or do you think like that was all after the fact? I think it's probably all after. Like I Dang. 
It's like they had no idea, like, their themes or, like, how iconic the music would be at all until it came out. There's our gang. What a fucking ending. Squad. That's just a classic. Written and directed by George motherfucking Lucas. That's our boy. So. Genius. Let's do it through these credits here. Our ratings. Ratings of this movie. Well, Uh, I think it's uh, pretty easy to say that an enjoyment uh, is an easy five out of five. That's an easy five out of five. Um, without much qu- question or hesitation, there. That's pretty easy. As the genre, space fantasy. That's a five out of five. I mean, it is the genre. It's the gold standard. Yeah, it's a it's a five out of five. Pretty easily. And now. As a film. Are we biased here? Or is it really? Here's the thing. It's the only it's the only movie in the entire saga designed to have ended there. It is the most complete story of any of the stories across all the Star Wars movies. Um, I think that... Mm, I think that it's incredibly well written. I think it's incredibly well performed. Incredibly well directed. Uh, in terms of the, of the goal being this 1940s serial type vibe with fast-paced dialogue and a lot of upbeat action it 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 does exactly what it wants to um now i can see how this can be hard to get into and i think that's got to play a part in in a critical review like i think you do got to care for the material a little bit to be like Okay, I'm in. Mm-hmm. Um, however, that doesn't change the genius of it and the the impact that it had throughout all of Hollywood for the foreseeable future as it continues to today. As a film, this like coming out in 77, the techniques that were used, like... It, like take out the actual movie and just like just focus like on what this movie did for Hollywood and like how movies were just made after this like it's impacts different like i mean it's a five out of five. I mean, yeah. It's like, a five out of five. I don't no, know of a thing is, that they did wrong. This is our first and our only five out of five on the entire 52 uh, week list we've got. I, I can't imagine. And for that, take our rating with a grain of salt. But we're with the Penny. You're with the Penny Bloom podcast here. You knew what this was. Don't lie to yourself. You know exactly what we are. What do you want us to give it a four point nine as a film? What What do you want us to do? Huh? What do you want? Me? What do you want from me? What, what the mean? fuck do you want from me? Yeah, come on. I no, mean, what, what, no. what, yeah, it's uh, that 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 brings the uh, February average up quite a quite a bit, quite a tick. Um, as it is the only five out of five film we have so far. Um. A new king. A new, a new king. A new the, uh, yep, godfather. I'm crowning the godfather. And obviously, I think that we're going to have to really hold movies more to the godfather standard. Uh, because, like, I'm thinking about it and I'm like, critically, I can't remove myself from Star Wars enough to even come close to giving it a, a non-biased judgment. Like, 
it's just so obviously a perfect five out of five for me. Uh, like I think to myself, is this, is this really better than the Godfather? And I don't know, but I know that I'm perfectly okay with it. In my opinion, being better than the Godfather. It's better than the Godfather. I'd say. Yeah. Yes. There, it, it, it's hard to compare the two even. Um, they're just wildly different movies. Exactly. And that's um, why like, I don't like comparing anything. It's just that like, you know, in the context of what we're doing here, it's like, if that's what we've considered critically the best movie we've watched so far, is this better than that? And I think it is. I think it it does something a lot ballsier, does something that literally has not been done as well before or since, arguably. Honestly, it's probably the, like, the biggest showing of, like, a Hollywood genius. Like, it's like, the fact that people got to watch, like, got to experience this, like, Ooh. you know, like, someone poured, like, their heart and soul into this movie, like, created this universe from scratch, like, and just killed it with a first movie, like, plans of doing three, all like, six, like, from the get-go, like, insane, like, dude... King wrote languages like Utini. it's like it's a masterful film I like yeah I don't know it's hard to find anything bad about Star like people complain that it's too long well it, this one's only this one's only two hours and four yeah, minutes yeah so I guess starting out with R2 and 3PO could be slow for some people. Not um, if you love Star Wars, though. That's as, as that's that's an like, and that's the thing. I love this shit so much, and I always fucking will, and I'll never apologize for it. No, there yeah, nothing, we don't, we don't, yeah. There's nothing to even, yeah. There's nothing to even talk about. Exactly. Yeah. It's a five out of five. It's a five out of five, and you know, it's it's. Nearly 2 a.m. on Thanksgiving morning. <laughs> so, I think that's, I think that's that. On that. Star Wars, 1977. That's a fucking wrap. Next week, uh, what'll, well, that'll be our last one for February. It shall. Uh, the 36th Chamber of Shaolin for, uh, for week 30, or for, for, uh, 1978. Sorry, I got in the 36th mm -hmm. chamber mindset mm -hmm. and I was like, 30, wait, wait, no. 1978 next week, the 36th chamber of Shaolin. Critically, very, very excited for that. One of the best martial arts movies of all time, I've uh, heard. That's what I've heard as well. So I mean, influenced a great many of my favorite musics by Wu Tang Clan. Mm -hmm. So, uh, very, I'm very excited to uh, finally watch that movie. Got it also on DVD, same time that I bought Jaws and Taxi Driver. Got it all in a got it all in one little trip to the video mm. store. Uh, very excited for my next trip whenever I start digging into the 80s. Mm. Um, that'll, that'll be fun. We're getting close to the end of the 70s, man. That was 77. Wow. Yeah, we're almost there. We're almost there. Almost to the 80s. Wow. Well, shit, man. Yeah, if you if you would head to patreon.com slash coro bloom and uh you know, we got twenty one plus hours of exclusive content, uh, not available anywhere else. A bunch of artwork I do not available anywhere else anywhere else. That money all goes back into making sure I can keep this podcast up and going, which is really important to me. I love this shit. It's a lot of fun. Um, if you would follow on Twitter at Penny Bloom Pod, where I'll keep you updated on what we're watching week to week. If anything's going to change from what I say on the podcast, odds are it won't. But uh, just in case it does, head there. We also provide Twitter commentary on a variety of things, many a poll, many a take. 
very enjoyable. And also had to Penny Bloom podcast on Instagram and follow uh, for graphics on what we're doing every single episode. Uh, yeah. I was Colton Robertson. I was joined by Joseph George. Thank you very much, buddy. Thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. And peace, love, and bloom. And Chewie, get us out of here! <laughs>